Hello and welcome to another episode of the Oracle's Classroom. Uh, today we take a look at the Berkshire Hathaway Chairman's Letter and how to calculate the manufacturing, service, and retail business uh, return on tangible assets that Buffett references in those letters. And I want to thank Jesse for his suggestion for this video. Uh, it's a, something I've been meaning to do for a while and uh, Jesse asked an excellent question on another video and uh, which spawned... Uh, spurred this video. So uh, to dig in here and just to quickly start off, I've chosen 2013 for a reason. Uh, in I believe it was 2017, the manufacturing service and retailing segment uh, went away or it was the last year. Um, and so I have a nice uh, block of the decade from 2004 to 14 that I'll be showing in a minute here. But 2013 is one in which the calculation works out to what Buffett says in his letter. Uh, 2014, there was a change with the accounting from Marmon. And the year before, in 2012, the addition of Lubrizol also skewed the number such that the, the number Buffett references and what's in the report, it doesn't calculate exactly, uh, but those, those are the reasons why. So, uh, but what's more important is the actual lesson here and what Buffett is saying. So, at the top, uh, we'll just start uh, at this, uh, this top paragraph here. And Buffett's saying a couple different things in, in this short section. So the first section, he's saying that businesses, good businesses are ones that earn a good return on unleveraged net tangible assets. And what he means by that is they earn a good return on total capital. So as if the business were entirely equity financed because returns on equity can be enhanced with the use of debt. And he's really looking for a business that stands alone as a good business without any kind of financial engineering. Buffett gives us a clue here as to what he thinks are good businesses. So 25% uh, after tax to more than 100% are what the Berkshire's businesses in this category earn. And he says good returns are from 12 20% uh, and anything above that, you know, I, I would assume he would, he would mean as excellent, you know, up to a, over a hundred percent in some cases. So down here, uh, he's saying, uh, the second highlighted paragraph that as a whole, these businesses earn 16.7% after tax on their net tangible assets. Now this is slightly different than the unleveraged net tangible assets. And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and I think I know why Buffett chose that. And that's because these businesses aren't very leveraged when considering the cash that they have in the books. And then the third element we have going on here is this third highlighted section, which bring in the element of purchase price. So when Buffett's looking at a business, he cares about the actual business itself. Now, of course, a good business and a great business are going to command a premium in the market. And a lot of Berkshire's businesses have been purchased at a price over their net tangible assets or net net equity. And that figure shows up as goodwill. So the business itself may earn a very high return on net tangible assets, but Berkshire may earn a lower return on the price that it's paid because of that premium. And of course, reinvesting into the business organically does not require additional goodwill. Uh, it's done at that net tangible asset level. So over time, if the business continues to reinvest at those high levels, that, uh, that lower figure can actually, uh, creep up a bit, but we'll, we'll stop there for, for a moment. So here we have the summary balance sheet and earnings statement from the 2013 chairman's letter. This summarizes the, uh, earnings and balance sheet of uh, the manufacturing service and retailing businesses. And uh, it's from here that we can pull the numbers necessary to calculate that return uh, that Buffett calculates. So really for the two numbers that we need uh, for this calculation are Berkshire's equity and the goodwill and intangibles. Now for this this purpose, uh, because we're using the after tax and after non-controlling interests 
to calculate the return, we're just going to use the Berkshire equity figure uh, because we're not going to use, uh, we're not going to include the earnings attributable to the non-controlling interest. So we take the 53 billion, 690 million, subtract the 25 billion, 617 million dollars for goodwill and intangibles. And uh, we also do the same calculation from the 2012 earnings uh, or balance sheet rather. And uh, that gives us the average capital figure uh, of, of 25 billion that Buffett references. And then all we have left to do is take that net earnings figure from the earnings statement in 2013, divide it into the $25 billion figure, and we get the 16.7% that Buffett references in his commentary. At this point, it would be helpful to return to Buffett's chairman's letter and unpack his words a little bit more because there are a couple different things happening here. So in this first paragraph, he says that a good business is one that's measured with a satisfactory return on unleveraged net tangible assets. In that third paragraph, he's just saying net tangible assets, and that's the calculation he uses to get to that 16.7%. So what he means by net tangible assets is simply the tangible equity figure. So that equity figure as reported minus the goodwill and intangibles figure. What he means by unleveraged net tangible assets is simply including debt along with the calculation. So typically he has used in the past the uh, long-term debt plus equity uh, and he uses the pre-tax figure because that removes any kind of distortions over time due to uh, the interest expense uh, write-off as well as any kind of tax changes. Uh, and then, of course, down below, he's talking about, uh, in that last paragraph, the goodwill premium, which reduces the return to the purchaser. Now, I believe he just uses the simple net tangible assets to calculate the return because, as we'll see in a minute, Berkshire's manufacturing service and retailing businesses uh, typically carry a good amount of cash. And in fact, around this time, they had more cash on the balance sheet than the debt. So effectively, by using that net tangible assets figure, he was using uh, the unleveraged figure as well. But uh, just for simplicity's sake, I believe he used that. But it is instructive to use the unleveraged net tangible assets as well, uh, because that gives a clue as to the business over time. Uh, so we'll, we'll see that in just a second. So what we have here is the manufacturing service and retailing businesses, financial and data laid out uh, from 2004 to 2014. And these figures were taken right from the chairman's report and uh, we can see that 16.7 percent in the 2013 column uh, that we calculated and that Buffett referenced in his letter. Now again 2014 there was a shift in how things were reported with Marmon. In 2012 the figure was uh, distorted by the 2011 acquisition by Lubrizol. So these numbers uh, if you're calculating them yourself or referencing the chairman's letter, you'll find that some of these don't match what Buffett says in his letters. Uh, you know, for uh, you know, we would trust Buffett that he has uh, all the information at his fingertips, and that you know the the figures as reported at year end might include some distortions. Uh, but it's it's an imperfect exercise, but that's okay for our purposes. So. We can see, uh, and I've included the balance sheet and income statement. That's probably too small to see. And um, I have uploaded this as a, a 1200 DPI. So uh, it's looking a little fuzzy to me as I'm recording this. I'm hoping that it doesn't come out too blurry when it's uh, finally produced on YouTube. Uh, so I do apologize for that. Uh, I will put these on the oraclesclassroom.com uh, for you to see much more clearly and, uh, and have that continuing discussion. So, uh, again, just to uh, sort of unpack this key ratios uh, figures and figures at the at the bottom of the screen here. So, um, 
uh, the first row is, is the tangible capital. So that's just simply calculated uh, by using the equity plus debt uh, less the goodwill and intangibles. And then as a measure of uh, capital efficiency, I've included the uh, capital turnover, this revenues to average capital, uh, tangible capital, as well as uh, pre-tax margin. And when you multiply those two, uh, the revenues to tangible capital and the pre-tax margin, you get a pre-tax return on tangible capital. And this is the figure that Buffett really cares about uh, and judges the quality of the business. And this is the the rate of return uh, at which, if, if it can be compounded internally, leads to an incredible amount of value to Berkshire. <clears throat> now, down below uh, in that next, that second section, return on average equity after tax. This includes the goodwill figure. And Buffett has said in the past that you should judge the business manager, the, the manager of these individual businesses, by their own pre-tax return on tangible capital, because that's the capital that they actually have to employ. But when it comes to judging Buffett's performance, you have to use the goodwill figure because he actually outlaid that cash to purchase these businesses. So that's low, uh, much lower than the, the pre-tax uh, tangible uh, figure. Um, and comparing apples to apples, the return on average tangible equity after tax, uh, the uh, total, that first line in the second section, uh, we'll just use 2013 as an example. The 8.3% is the uh, Berkshire Hathaway return, and the 16.7% is the... Uh, tangible return. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, the first line of that second section, or the third section rather, shows the net debt position of the MSR businesses. So we can see from 2004, <clears throat> the net, net debt, so simply uh, both long-term and short-term debt minus cash, <clears throat> indicated that uh, on a consolidated basis, they owed 2.2 billion. And then beginning in 2013, that figure actually turned negative, which meant that the businesses had more cash on hand net than uh, cash on the books. <clears throat> and uh, just a, a couple, uh, two, two, two ratios here. Notes payable to equity, just a simple measure of leverage. And then the total assets to total equity uh, is just another measure of leverage, uh, which we can see along with that net debt position has declined, uh, had declined from 2004 to 2014. So that's the way Buffett calculates his ratios uh, and some insight into his thinking into what makes a good business and how to go about analyzing it. Uh, I thought I'd just give, uh, leave the tail end of this video uh, so it's all contained in one place. The uh, balance sheets and uh, income statements as reported in Buffett's chairman's letter, uh, just to have them here. Um, really interested, you know, if you have any comments, questions, if there's anything I mix, missed, or if there's uh, anything that's still unclear, please let me know. Uh, you can email me, uh, check out theoraclesclassroom.com, uh, respond, uh, comment to the video. Uh, please like and share uh, if you like this, uh, which I'm hoping uh, if you stuck around to the 14 minute mark that you did. Uh, so I certainly appreciate everyone tuning in. And uh, until next time, I uh, hope everyone is well and stay rational.